God, give us Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give us Jesus. Come and fill this place. Help us encounter you. Help us turn our eyes to you. We need you. We want you. We invite you. We long for you. This is your time, Holy Spirit. Do your work among us, we pray. Amen. Thank you, band. Everybody's trying to find Nemo and Dory. No wonder they can't find them. They're a city church. What you saw, you know, before when the kids were up here is one of what we call the big four here. I don't know if you know the term big four. That's some of us call it the big four. One of the big four is the next generation. We want to be intentional about investing in our children and youth. So that's, you know, what you saw is not an accident. It's not something else. And this is church. What happened here was church all week long with those kids. The others are the big four, prayer, because that's where the power lies. Discipleship, because we want to be like Jesus and follow him. And community, because we want to do it together. So that's our big four. So we're finishing up a series today, uh, 1, 2, 3, John, the letters or the epistles of John. I don't speak that much here. You all must know that. And so you don't like it? Hey, there'll be somebody else next Sunday. <laughs> And we're going to start in a minute with testimonies like we've uh, been doing. So think about that. Think about, you know, now is, uh, if you want to, there's something you want to share. Maybe it's something from uh, the book of John, the series of John. Maybe it's something about VBS. Maybe you worked at VBS and you want to share something that was cool for you. Maybe you want to give God glory to something that was in your life. So while you're thinking about that, I'm just going to remind you of where we've been in John. John has been about, you know, a lot of things, but some of the big ones are, about He was talking about what we've seen and heard because John was an eyewitness to the truth about Jesus. It was about proclaiming to you eternal life, the good news that we can experience God now and for eternity. Uh, the John series has about, been about if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive because he's made a way to deal with the sin that wants to rule over us. It's been about warnings about not loving the world or the things of the world. Why? Because there's something better to be found. It's been about, beloved, let us one, love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. And it's not a silly love like we have in our culture. It's the kind of love that propelled Christ to die for our sins, to help, to call us to love our enemies, to serve rather than be served. It's a kind of love that we can't possibly do in our own strength. We can only do it with Jesus. For Martha and I, this actually these last couple of weeks, we've had trouble with this. There have been some people in our lives, I don't want to tell this story, it's not a fun story, but really, really kind of not being nice to us, you know? And I found myself just obsessing, you know? I should say this, I should do that. You know, the love kind of love from the series of John was far from me. I realized that I need more of Jesus to be able to show that kind of love. So, so let's take a little while to do the sharing, um, you know, like we've been doing. So who, you kind of know how this goes. We've been doing it a while. Who wants to say something? So we are into three John. We've been through 1 John, 2 John, and we're now at the end. We're into 3 John. Can you put up the first section of Scripture? This, this is the beginning of 3 John. He says, the elder, because at this point in his life, John is probably anywhere between 65 and 80 years old. So he's an elder by influence. You know, he has some responsibility for the churches in the part of the country where, where he lives. He's also an elder by just age. He's an old dude. Okay, so he says the elder. And he's writing from Ephesus, where Caleb and Kim just went. I've been there too. It's a marvelous place to visit, which is in modern Turkey. He's, it was like a major 
city for that region. And, yet, and so, you know, the churches all around there, you know, John is kind of like the spiritual authority there for the churches. And the whole book is 14 verses. I think, uh, Caleb, didn't you call it a tweet last? <laughs> Somebody called it a tweet. It's like an ancient tweet. You know, a tweet is a, a tweet is 140 letters. You know, you can't do any more. Uh, John is written on one sheet of papyrus. So however many verses you can fit there, that's it. You're done. So he, you can get 14 verses. So this is like an ancient tweet. Okay, and he writes to my dear friend Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and all that you may, and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. That's sweet. Huh? Wouldn't you want to hang out with this guy? It gave me great joy when some believers came and testified about your faithfulness to the truth, telling how you continue to walk in it. I have no greater joy than to hear my children are walking in truth. So I'm glad that Mike's here today. I want to use him as an example. Okay. Imagine Mike is 80 years old. You know, what is that? Two, two three more years? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Lisa helps him get his walker. He's out on his front porch. And some people come up, and they're from City Church. And they start talking to him. They're saying, you know, Jason and Caleb, you know, what a good job they're doing. You know, these are guys that Mike discipled, right? Uh, we just had, they just had a VBS, and there were 64 kids, and a lot of kids' lives got changed. They've got seven community groups meeting. A lot of the church are in community groups, you know, more than the typical church. And, you know... Wouldn't you think that would be really cool for Mike to hear in his old age? Uh, this, is what, this is what John is saying. I mean, what could be better than hearing that when you look back on your life and see you made a difference in the lives of others? So that's what, John's hap what is happening with John here. Somebody's coming up. Some people in there telling him about uh, the, you know, the faithfulness of the believers. And he says, I have no greater joy than to hear my children walking in the truth. So in the sense, we're the children here of, of Mike and Lisa. They founded this church. What would give them greater, more greater joy than to know we're doing well? Okay. So, you know, even counselors would tell you, uh, you know, if you want to have greater joy, focus on others. Don't just be stressing about your own stuff all the time. Business coaches would tell you that. You want to build a business? What are you supposed to do? Focus on your customers. So as Christians, we have an even deeper reason to focus on others because that's what God's doing. He's building his church. You want to get to know God better? You want to hang out where he's hanging out. And he's about helping his children walk in the truth. Right? So for you or me, who are your disciples? Who are you helping to walk in the truth? Who are you intentionally trying to help experience and follow Christ? I hope when I say that, some people come to mind for you. You know, I hope there's, you know, like two or three people that you're saying, you know, I am really all about or want to be about helping them walk in the truth. That's where you're going to find joy, at least according to John. It, you don't find joy as much by your own stuff, doing your own stuff. You find joy in how you help other people. You set them free. You know, help them to follow Christ. Help them to have breakthroughs. You know, so this, you know, this is this is what we need to be about: helping our children walk in the truth. So then, the next section he goes on. He says, "Dear friend," he's talking, writing, talking to his friend Gaius again. Uh, you are faithful in what you are doing for the brothers and sisters, even though they are strangers to you. They have told the church about your love. Please send them on their way in a manner that honors God. It was for the sake of the name that they went out, receiving no help from the pagans. We ought, therefore, to show hospitality to such people so that we may work together for the truth. 
Okay, so now, you know, today it's, it's, it's so easy. I can, if I want to learn some theological point, I can Google anything. I can find out what any famous pastor, I can Google what John Piper thinks about it and Rick Warren and Francis Chan and Billy Graham. I can even Google what the Pope thinks about it. You know? Back then, how did you learn? Okay, you learn because traveling teachers would come and be there and, and teach you. That's what, that's what was happening here. You know, John was sending traveling teachers around to, to these churches, okay? And uh, it, it, the closest thing I've, I've seen that, that where that happened here is, remember when that guy Jerry came? The men's group here had some guy Jerry came. And lots of us came to this, like, seminar. It, Jerry was an expert, like, on a hard part of the Book of Romans, chapter 9 through 11. So Jerry came here. A, a lot of us came. We heard him, and when he left, we gave him quite a big offering for a church our size, you know? So the Apostle John would have liked that. He would have said, we did this. We, we, we sent him on a way in a matter that honors God, right? So that's sort of, what's ha that's sort of how it was back then. These guys would come and, and, and teach, you know? So the other thing about those days is when you're traveling, you're vulnerable, you know? You're walking or you're donkey, I don't know what, but you're on the road, you know, there could be robbers, you know, whatever the weather, you're out there vulnerable. It's dangerous. Not like now. If I want to go somewhere, I book a hotel online everywhere I'm going to be. If my car breaks down, I call AAA. We've eliminated the, the need for hospitality, you know? We can take care of everything ourselves, you know? So Martha and I ac actually do hospitality a lot. There's probably a lot of things we're not great examples of, I'm sure. But the hospitality, we actually do a lot. Part of it is because of my work. I work for this international uh, mission organization. So there's always people coming through from long ways away, uh, you know, don't know anything or any, you know, can't get along on their own. They need somebody to take care of them. So a lot of these folks stay with us. And I, I give you an example. One of my favorites was there was these three ladies from Kyrgyzstan. They all are, were former Muslims. And they, the three of them were leaders of this ministry that my organization is in partnership with. So it was so interesting hearing about their lives and what they're doing, all this, how they came to Christ and all that kind of stuff. The funny thing was, I found, I'm talking to, it turned out that one of them, her husband was the chief of police in charge of things like making sure the Christians aren't evangelizing Muslims. Her husband. And I'm thinking, wow. So I say, how's that working for you? You know, <laughs> she said, it was funny what she said. She said, she, well, we have to be careful, but if, Nobody messes with us when they find out who my husband is, <laughs> you know, because he, he's, he's a bad dude. So, so, that, so that, that was good for them. Uh, uh, or we have a lot of visitors also because of Martha's work with international students at Gonzaga, uh, student parties, a lot. Uh, one of my favorite stories of that is when she had the Saudi ladies over for a women-only party so they could take off their head coverings and be wild and really party, you know? I, I couldn't even pass through the house to say hello. I mean, it's just no men, you know? And it was so sweet. One of them said, um, this is the first time since I left my country I haven't been homesick. You know? So this is hospitality. Hospitality is about, you know, being in others' lives, you know, showing love, showing care. You don't have to do it like we do. You know, not everybody has a guest room, and not everybody can do it how we do. But there's lots of other ways to do it. One, one, I just saw one on Facebook. Chris Chandler, you know, the other, the other day posted, 
anybody wants to come over and you know, sit by the fire, you're welcome. That's hospitality. Just taking someone out to coffee. You know, that's hospitality. Don't you think the person receiving that invitation would feel that's hospitable? So it's about a kingdom focus. It's hard to step out sometimes and take the risk, but there is a great reward too, because John says, this honors God. And don't we want to be about honoring God? You know? So moving to the next section, there's more. He said, I wrote to the church, but Diotrephes, who loves to be first, will not welcome us. These are these traveling teachers, remember I talk about? This guy, Diotrephes, will not welcome us. So when I come, I will call attention to what he's doing, spreading malicious nonsense about us. Not satisfied with that, he even refuses to welcome other believers. He also stops those who want to do so and puts them out of the church. Okay. So this is the opposite of hospitality, right? This, this guy's a church leader. How would you like to have this guy as your pastor? All right. He, he refuses to welcome the traveling teachers. And those who want to welcome those folks, he excommunicates them from the church. Wow. Now, it doesn't say why he does this. Now, one possibility is that he resents the influence John has over the church. And, doesn't, and therefore, he doesn't want these traveling teachers to come. Because this is a time where the, all the other apostles, the, the 12, have already died. Okay, John's the only one left. So the churches are learning to be independent, you know, from the original 12 guys. So maybe Diotrephes, you know, I'm, I'm guessing here a little bit. But maybe he thinks it's time for us to be independent of the church. We don't want to be under John anymore. He probably thinks he's doing the right thing. The, maybe the people in the church really even like it. Hey, he, here's a take charge leader. Okay. So, but whatever his reasons, God has a way of seeing through to the root and, he, and says, the reason for all this is Diotrephes loves to be first. What do you love? You know what I love? I love to be consulted for my advice. Don't you think that gets in the way sometimes? Don't you think I can get offended and resistant to what is going on, what God's doing? because nobody consulted me for my advice? What do you love? You love to be noticed? You love to be appreciated? Does it get in the way, what God's trying to do? I think we could have a, like an AA meeting. I, my name is Bob Savage, and I am Diotrephes. <laughs> right? <laughs> Hey, you've been there too much. Okay. <laughs> because the things we love and crave keep us from welcoming what God is doing and going after it 100%. But by God's grace, we can confess these things and overcome them and be set free. Not like the atrophies. So the next section uh, is about another guy who's the opposite of Diotrephes. It says, dear friend, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. Anyone who does what is good is from God. Anyone who does what is evil has not seen God. Demetrius is well spoken of by everyone and even by the truth itself. We, always, we also speak well of him, and you know that our testimony is true. I have much to write you, but I do not want to do so with pen and ink. I hope to see you soon, and we will talk face to face. Peace to you. The friends here send their greetings. Greet the friends there by name. So now we got another guy. Diotrephes, now we got Demetrius. So he, we don't really know who De, Demetrius was. De, 
Demetrius was, you know, he just kind of appears in the story. It probably he was either the guy who carried this letter to Gaius, or he might have been one of those traveling teachers. He's well spoken of by everyone. You know, the Christian life is not a private faith. We are followers of God himself. We are saved by his mercy. We're filled with his spirit. We're witnesses to his glory. We ought to be well spoken of by everyone. The stamp of Jesus is upon us. Yes, yes there's going to be people who oppose Christ. And yes, there's going to be battles. And yes, there's going to be persecutions. But generally, shouldn't we stand out? Shouldn't the people be able to say there's something different about them? You know, to be well spoken of by everyone, to be like Demetrius. Okay, so we have already John so short the tweet. We already have gone through all of Third John. Okay, did God speak anything to you today? One thing. You know, I'd be happy if one thing. Got, you heard one thing today. Something that went deep. Something you need to know that you know you need to obey. Th Third John was about having joy because your children, the people whose lives you are influencing, are walking in the truth. It's about intentional discipling relationships. It's about stepping out to show hospitality because this honors God. It's about being like Demetrius and not Diotrephes. I had to practice some of these words. Okay. Demetrius was well spoken of by everyone. Diotrephes loved to be first. It's about getting close enough to Jesus so we're full of him and people see less of our own stuff and more of him. So do you have one thing in mind that you heard? Um, let's live it out. Let's live it out starting tomorrow. Go after it. Obey it. Do it. That's where the blessing comes. You know, it's not just from sitting here and listening and nicely. It's taking it with you and saying, today, God, you and me, we are going to do this together. You know? My own experience with all of you, I just want to say, I see more of Demetrius in all of you than Diotrephes. I see Jesus in you, City Church. I see you becoming more like him. I see you overcoming, being lights to the world. I think you're doing well. And I'm proud to be on this journey with you. So just a few reminders. Are, where, where are we meeting next week? Is, or isn't, I forgot. Isn't next week the... Next, remember, next week we're not here. Next week we're, we're at Shale at what time? 1 p.m. Okay, don't forget that. Yes. Uh, if you want prayer, the, Jason and Andrea are going to be over there. I hope you'll take advantage of this. If there's something really on your heart, we don't want you to leave here without somebody praying with you. So they'll be over there. If you want to uh, help the kids go to camp and get a hot dog in return, don't forget that right now, after the church, we're going to have hot $3 hot dogs and drinks and chips. Okay? So let me just pray us out. Jesus, it's a high calling to follow you. We do want to know the joy of helping your children walk in the truth. We do want to honor you by showing hospitality. We want to overcome the sins that hold us, not like the diatrophies who wanted to be first. Any of these things we cannot do in our own strength. But we can because of your work of your Holy Spirit in us. We turn to you, Jesus. We ask to be filled we ask that we can live out this high calling starting tomorrow. 
Amen.